shoot us. Driver women and children night and day. They may chain our hands and our feet, but the red man's heart will always, always be free. The Seminole Wars represents one of the darkest moments in American history. These people's lands and their lives through the crude surgery of civilization was our first Vietnam. It was the first encounter we had with guerrilla warfare as a country. And we were locked into a battle that not only could we not win, we didn't win. And it's a history that's not dealt with truthfully very often because it's a very, very dark history. We intend to try to put it together, showing both the nobility of these people and what they stood for, the purity of their morality and the quality of their thinking. Also, we have to reveal what really happened to them. It's usually not dealt with truthfully, but I can't, I can't justify approaching it the other way. So it might not be popular to tell the truth about what happened to them. That's what I'm gonna do. Chief Osceola, died at Fort Moultrie after he had been captured under a white flag. And before his death, he had all of his formal clothing brought to him and dressed himself piece by piece before the great painter George Catlin, who was doing his portrait. And George Catlin described the color of each of the articles he put on before he lay down to die. And I, as accurately as I could, followed those descriptions, mixing metals, mixing epoxies, and mixing powdered marbles to duplicate as closely as I could the idea of the various colors. The colors are important to the Indian people. Chief Micanopi was the hereditary big chief of the Seminole Nation during the beginning of the Second Seminole War. He was an actual descendant of Cowkeeper who was credited as being the direct line descendant of the founder of the Seminole people. The younger men were his advisors, the Tustanujis, or warlords. Osceola was the master spirit of the Seminole War. And Chief Wildcat was the hero of the Second Seminole War. These people had never been done in portrait sculpture before. Chief Wildcat, considered, he's considered to be the hero of the Second Seminole War. He's the one that escaped from St. Augustine by going through a six inch by, or eight inch by 18 inch crack. But he's the philosophical standard bearer for that entire tribe in my mind. And so consequently, I decided to evolve the piece from an 1840 map of Florida in his chest on into the portrait bust of him. He is the one who's attributed, the quote is attributed, my father King Philip told me I was made from the sands of Florida and when buried, the Seminoles would dance around my grave. I liked the way that sounded. I understood, I think, what he meant. And the blue part that represents the ocean is powdered cobalt and white marble mixed together. What you see of Florida as it emerges up through the chest and the head is powdered bronze mixed with powdered brass mixed with epoxy. And the band around the top of his head and the other silver color in one of his feathers is aluminum mixed with epoxy. And this is all laid up inside the mold, not applied to the outside of the piece. What you see was cast in the mold. But the Florida that they lived in and the Florida that they died for is captured in a video called Environmental Symphony, Opus Florida. And I felt so strongly about, about that that I actually buried the video inside the body and gave a copy of it to the Fort Myers Historical Museum.